Let's take a look at what got left behind at Talladega this weekend. The RFK racing cars were missing the roof rails at the end of the race. What was up with that? Plus, the Roval changes, they're going to cause chaos. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. So after every race at Talladega, things get left behind. Mattresses, couches, TVs, deer heads, a lot of things get left behind. And the Talladega Twitter account typically puts together a thread about what got left behind. And this past weekend at Talladega was no different. Let's take a look at things that got left behind. Starting off, a lot of couches got left behind. If you ever try to get rid of a couch, you understand it's difficult. Unless you live in like Morgantown, West Virginia, you can light it on fire. Typically you have to call somebody, wrap it in cellophane, feel like you're in an episode of Dexter, and then dispose of it that way. It's not the most fun thing in the world. And if you can just leave it in Talladega, well, that's an option as well. Honestly, this one's not in that bad of shape. I'm sure there's a back room somewhere that could use a couch very similar to this one. If the admin was smart, they would have grabbed it and put it on Marketplace for like 200 bucks. While the lime green porta potty kind of throws off the whole feel for this design, Design here that maroon rug really brings the entire look together. I'm sure absolutely diabolical things have happened on that couch, though. Ah oh, man, grandma's gonna be pissed about her couch being in the field in Talladega. Honestly, at least it doesn't have a plastic covering over top of it, but for real, I can feel that couch. I'm pretty sure everybody's grandparents had a similar couch like that in their basement in a back room. If you're of a certain age, you probably sat on a couch like that. The Falcons left a care package for the Talladega admin um, in the infield as well. And at first I thought it was a Mike Vick jersey. And I was like, well, that was in poor taste the same week that Alabama beat the dogs in Tuscaloosa. Uh, it turns out it's a Bijan Robinson jersey, which makes a lot more sense. And Alabama doesn't really get to celebrate their win over Georgia too much because they went up to Vandy and got beat in a construction site. Oh no. Somebody took cornhole a little bit too literally. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go ahead and Urban Dictionary it if you dare. I am concerned about the sanitary status of that mattress though. A used mattress on the Talladega infield or the Talladega campgrounds is honestly one of the scariest things in the world. It could be completely harmless. It could contain hepatitis. You could turn into patient zero. Uh, you're gonna fall somewhere in between there though. Somebody brought their pet deer head Randall to the racetrack this weekend because they probably got drunk the weekend before and they're like, you know who loves racing? Randall. Does. took him down off the wall, brought him to the racetrack, party too hard, his skin is literally falling off. A pool table, a pool table in the infield. Do you know how heavy a pool table is? I know that's not a single slate pool table. A pool table is like 10 Jimmy Spencers. It's very heavy to move. You're not just moving that with one person, but at least they left the chalk cube there in case you wanted to shoot around. I've never smoked any meats in my life. And honestly, when I first saw this picture, I was like, somebody brought a safe to the Talladega infield. That seems dangerous. Now it turns out it's just a smoker, but I feel like somebody had to make a decision here. They couldn't fit everything back into the truck. They probably bought, I don't know, like the nose of a race car over in one of the gypsy tents. And they're like, nose of the race car or the smoker smoker lost out on this end before folding tents became super easy to fold up i think like we all probably had the same thought where we wanted to absolutely wreck one of the frames but now they're so easy it doesn't take a mensa level of intelligence to figure out how to fold them back together it seems like somebody probably just got frustrated here there were a lot of tvs left behind at talladega this weekend and this one right here it appears they went down to walmart bought a vizio 55 use it for the weekend and then just set it there so admin congrats on having a new 55 inch television so that's the highlights of what was left behind in the fall of 20 2024. I'm excited to get back to Talladega in the spring of 2025 to see what gets left behind. How many couches can get left behind? That might be a new challenge. I'm sure Talladega is not happy about that, but I feel like people are going to keep bringing couches that they want to dispose of. Have not seen anybody bring a sectional yet now. I'm just saying, just saying I haven't seen one. All right, moving on to something that happened on track at Talladega this weekend. Uh, talk about leaving something behind. Both the RFK racing cars had a curious coincidence happen. They both left behind the front portion of their roof rail somewhere on track during Sunday's race. So the race started, both the 6 and the 17 car had the complete roof rail set, the ones that NASCAR mandated to be on the cars this weekend to prevent rollovers or blowovers, which we had none of. So great success, as Borat would say. And then towards the latter stages of the race, both the 6 and the 17 managed to lose that front portion of those new roof rails that were installed and it seemed to be only the 6 and the 17 so is it a curious coincidence could be maybe stranger things have happened right 
But it feels like something fishy may be going on here. I talked to somebody uh, with a race team. They said that NASCAR came around last week to the shops to make sure that everything was installed properly, make sure everything looked up to par. So it feels like something may have been going on here. Now, is it going to increase their speed by a lot? No, probably not. But at the same time, all the competitors would like to have all the cars be the same, or at least the same safety equipment on all of the race cars. Now, will NASCAR issue a penalty? It feels like they might have to, because they were missing. And it would have been really interesting if Brad Keselowski would have won that race on Sunday, how NASCAR would have teched his car in post-race. Is that enough to disqualify the car and, you know, take the race win away from him and hand it to Ricky Stenhouse or William Byron or whoever would have been in second place at that point? Or would they have let it slide and issue a monetary and points fine uh, later in the week? Well, as of Tuesday at 4 p.m., still have not heard from NASCAR about any sort of penalties at this point. So we'll have to wait and see about that. But it is interesting that both the 6 and the 17 had it happen. Denny Hamlin was not happy about it on his podcast. Uh, tons of people wanted to point out to me that this was something that had happened, which I was aware of on Sunday night. I saw Nick Bromberg from Yahoo tweet out the pictures of the 6 car. Um, and everybody's like, well, if Ricky, you know, if you're going to talk about Ricky having a hole in the side of his car, you got to talk about this. All right, I'm, I'm talking about it. We just took a day to get around to it at this point. Um yeah, I feel like there's probably going to be a penalty issued for that. I don't expect it to be something crazy unless they modified it to have them fall off, which I feel like they wouldn't do. I don't think Brad, you know, runs that type of organization, but we'll have to wait and see what NASCAR decides. Today's video is sponsored by Lockdown Brand. Head over to LockdownBrand.com today. Check out their t-shirts, their motorsport-inspired apparel, the collabs that they have with various drivers. Their hats are super popular amongst the motorsport community. Use code BREAKHARD10 at checkout for 10% off your order. Back when Charlotte Motor Speedway showed off their plans for reconfiguring the Roval uh, earlier this year, we were all like, okay, they're trying to set up a hairpin. I get it. They're trying to add like a heavier braking zone for the Gen 7 cars to help encourage passing. We got it. But somehow the most chaotic track on the NASCAR schedule just got more chaotic because the hairpin, after we saw actual photos of it, really, really is going to encourage some dive bombs happening. So if you missed it, gone are the traditional turn six, seven, and eight that we, they have been using since 2018 on the infield. Now they will come out of turn five. They will you know, go down this short straightaway into a sweeping right-hander for turn six, into a hairpin for turn seven. Turn seven, though, that hairpin was specifically designed for dive bond moves. I mean, they widen corner entry in a hairpin, which is something you typically don't see happening here. And if you have a green-white checker finish towards the end of this race or at the end of this race um, and, you know, guys are close together and packed up, people are absolutely going to take a chance here and try to dive bomb their way uh, through. So that has a chance to be very chaotic. And after Talladega, Charlotte Motor Speedway tweeted out the Roval awaits. And I'll be honest, I think chaos awaits at that. So that wasn't the only change. They also made a change to the front stretch chicane as well. They made it a much tighter corner, a corner where it is a much heavier braking zone getting into it. Again, for the Gen 7 cars, it makes sense because they're so good at braking. You need to have uh, heavier braking zones for it. However, again, it is going to set up for some potential dive bomb moves, uh, potential for guys to run into one another, potential for guys to just shove each other off the racetrack like their SVG and Austin Hill going at it at Coda. There's also a high probability we're going to see a number of drivers blow that corner this weekend and have to come to a stop on the front stretch or wherever the next safest area is at. Either way, Charlotte Motor Speedway, Marcus Smith, they've done, as Denny Hamlin said, everything short of putting a motocross jump on the racetrack to, you know, increase excitement and sort of manufacture some chaos or at least provide you with the playing field to um, have some chaos. And Charlotte this weekend is probably going to be a bit chaotic. It is a cutoff race for both the Xfinity and the Cup Series. You have desperate guys out there. And if you get a green-white checker, well, strap in and hold on because I think there's about to be a lot of beating and banging happening. So, let me know in the comments what you thought about what got left at Talladega, uh, the RFK cars uh, losing their roof rails, as well as the changes at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at BreakHardBlog.